Hey everyone, I'm Mind, and this is set number 71794, Lloyd and Aaron's Ninja Team Max from the very first Ninjago Dragon's Rising Wave. This set contains 764 pieces, 5 minifigures, and will retail for $79.99 in the US. This set is not officially released until June 1st, 2023, but it was set to be early by the LEGO Group through the LEGO Ambassador Network, but all opinions expressed in this video are my own. Real quick, before I get started, I'd just like to ask you guys, please like the video and subscribe to the channel if you're new. I'm doing early reviews of all of these summer 2023 LEGO Ninjago sets, and in fact, there's a lot of the reviews up on the channel right now and more coming very soon, as well as early reviews of other themes such as LEGO Monkey Kit and LEGO City, and a lot of other exciting stuff down the line. So if any of that sounds like something you'd be interested in, by liking this video and subscribing to the channel, I'll help put those videos in your feed as soon as they're posted, and also really help support me and the channel. But with all that being said, let's get on to the review. So here's Lloyd and Aaron's Ninja Team Max, and you can see the two Max actually combined together to be one. We've got the smaller Aaron Mac in the center, and then the big Mac in the back is Lloyd's, and I think that's actually a really creative new concept. We're going to take a look at both Macs separately first though, and then I'll show you how they recombine. I just wanted to show you the entire thing like this first. But here, you can see Aaron's Max just connected with a Technic pin to Lloyd's Mac. So you can just pull it out like that. And then its feet are threaded through these loops on the knees of Lloyd's Mac, and you just have to slide them out of there. Can be a little bit finicky, but there you go. And now with the Aaron Mac removed, there's a full look at the Lloyd Mac. And this Mac has a really unique design, so different from other Macs that we've gotten. So let's take a look at each part up a little bit closer. So you can see there's a really interesting design for the feet of the Mac. It's got like these wooden shoes on it, and these are inspired by Gita, which is apparently traditional Japanese footwear. I guess I'll put an image on screen of what those look like. And you can see, yeah, that's actually translated pretty well here and works pretty perfectly. Certainly very different from like the kind of feet we expect on Macs, but I always like when they mix it up. It actually looks super cool. Then the Macs have like these gray stone feet on top of that. And it looks like this handlebar piece is meant to be like a little sandal strap coming up, which is very cute. But yeah, great design here overall. Definitely stands out. In terms of range of motion, it's pretty much what you'd expect from Big Macs. Forward and back range of motion for the feet is there, but incredibly small. But side to side is fairly big. It's still not as big as some other Macs, but you can go about 45 degrees in each direction. Coming up the legs, I actually really like the texture down here. Lots of just incredibly varied pieces used. I like the use of this dark tan color too. Obviously, that's a color that we don't see Lloyd use all too often. And I like how they smooth the Mac out a bit on the back too. And then coming up a bit more, we get to the Mac knee. These rounded pieces on the side are like perfect to hide away the knee joint, and yes, there is a knee joint here that has become pretty common on Big Macs nowadays, but a couple of years ago, knees were not commonplace at all. So I'm really happy they are commonplace now, and yeah, they work great. You can see they bend at almost a 90 degree angle. It's not exactly 90 degrees, but it's pretty darn close. And although the knee definitely looks very mechanical from the back when you have it open, when you have it closed up, it actually creates a really nice shape. And obviously, yeah, for it to work, it has to look like this. I think that's perfectly fine. There's like these little loops around the knee too, where you saw Aaron's feet slide in. And while I think these are great when the Aaron Mac's connected, they do look a little bit funny when it's disconnected because there's just these giant loops protruding out. And then when we get to the very top of the leg, I don't know about this part. This part maybe feels a little bit unfinished to me. Like, you've got some open studs right here, which aren't the prettiest, but I guess that looks fine. However, you've also just got this red Technic pin here, and it doesn't connect to anything, and it really just stands out, and I don't really know why that's there at all. Red has the colors used on the weapon for this build, and like a few pieces on the interior, but the outside design doesn't really use red at all, so I don't know why they chose to feature it so prominently here. Obviously, it's very easy just to leave that piece off if you want, or put like a dark green stud or something on top of it, because something like that would look a little bit nicer if they were trying to cover up with the technicals. So like I get the idea of not wanting to show open technicals, but I don't know, putting this pizza in there almost makes it more obvious than the open technicals. So yeah, I don't really like this upper part of the leg, however it's a very simple modification to make if you just have extra pieces left over from this set or from other sets, but I find it a bit odd that this was intended to be the final mech in its base form. Then we get to the waist of the mech, the build here is actually super interesting. So you can see the legs connect onto the body with like these rounded rigid technic joints. These have been used a lot in recent years for example, on like the Golden Ultra Dragon from Crystallize to connect the legs to the body. And yeah, they work perfectly. They're incredibly stable, but also help lock the legs into place. And there's a fairly good range of motion there. You kick the leg forward, move it back. But then you can see another one of those joints is actually used at the back here to create like a bend in the body. And this just creates an incredibly unique angle in the build. And it's also customizable too. You don't have to have it always looking like this. So for example, if you'd rather have everything straight up, you could just move the waist part forward and then the main body up. And while that makes the mech more open and thin at the center, it also makes it taller and has it standing up completely straight. I prefer the bend just because it has a more dynamic and fun angle, but I love that that option is there and just increases the posability of the entire thing too. Because this not only allows you to bend the mech in the middle, but it also allows you to turn the entire upper torso piece, which just gives you a much bigger range of motion with this guy, and I really love that. That spin is still accessible and the torso is bent as well. Personally for me, I think that's the best part of the mech. I just love all the possibilities that it opens up. Now coming to that upper torso piece, you can see here's the cockpit for Lloyd to sit, and there's actually 
actually quite a lot of room in here. Two big red buttons on the side, a little seat for him, and then there's some space back here to still fit his armor. Here's how it looks with Lloyd actually piloting the Mac, and you can see it fits in there just fine. The front of the Mac definitely feels very open, and that's of course because it's meant to attach Aaron's Mac here. However, I don't know, I kind of wish there's maybe some sort of door that closed up and then Aaron's Mac connected to the front of the door. Because this isn't terrible, but it just kind of feels like Lloyd would fall out when Aaron's not here. So I don't mind the trade off, I think it still looks great when Aaron's Mac is connected, but it feels a little bit weaker when it's disconnected. And then you can see the head slash hat on the Mac is connected with some technical parts that allow it to rotate forward and back a little bit. And then the very top, it's also on a mini ball joint, so there's a pretty big range of motion there. It uses like this large disc piece to be like a conical hat, and I really love whenever mechs do this, it just has such a cool look to it, because you can have it just lean down like this, hiding the person inside the mech. Now, I don't know, something just seems really cool about having the mech standing there with the driver's identity hidden, and then like when it's ready to fight, you lift it up and reveal there's Lloyd in there. There's also a giant eyeball here on the mech, which is super cute. I've seen a lot of Bionicle fans saying this looks like one of the Bionicles, Kitangu. I'm not super deep down the Bionicle hole, but I felt like I couldn't review this set without at least mentioning that. But anyway, now let's move on to the arms of the mech, and I have incredibly mixed feelings on these. In terms of looks, I think they look fantastic. These like giant wing pieces to represent armor are super neat. When we first had the pictures of the set leaked like months ago, I thought these were going to be like giant vinyl pieces, similar to like what the Monkey King Warrior mech did in like a Monkey Kid. But no, instead these are like giant physical technic paneling with stickers on them, which is creative. However, I feel like it severely restricts the movement of this mech. You can see the entire paneling section connects all these mini ball joints at the back, and as such it's very easy just to grab them and change their position. Additionally, the two separate parts forward and back can also be rotated individually, so if you want to have them as like one flat thing like this, you can. Or you can have them more wrap around the arm like this. But yeah, you are able to like completely lift them up and out of the way if you want, and that just reveals the base arm underneath. But my issue here is I feel like the base arm without those pieces looks very like empty and plain, but with those pieces it makes it a lot more difficult to move around. Because yeah, these pieces are huge plastic pieces that sort of go around the arm or even just on top of them, and it's just not the easiest to move the arms of those there. Like if I try to move the arms forward, and then try to bend the wrist, you can see I keep getting resistance, and you can try to readjust this to fit around the arm, but you can see some positions it just doesn't look that great. There's no like good way to put the armor back around the arm. So while there is definitely still some like cold poses you can get it in, it definitely makes everything a lot more finicky. It's not as simple as just moving the mech's arms. You have to completely spin those armor pieces out of the way first, and then after you move the arms in the position you want, then you have to put them back down and try to find a way for them to fit back around the arms. So I think for display it's incredibly cool, but for play it's a lot more limiting because you have to constantly be moving those other pieces around. It's not as simple as just simply swinging the mech's arms like it is on some other mechs. So yeah, if you're a collector for display, I don't think this will bother you too much, but if you're someone who likes playing around with the mechs, this might be something you want to consider if you're thinking about getting this set. Anyway, now taking a look at the actual armor pieces up a bit closer, you can see there's a circle right here with Lloyd's L symbol, and a bit of text written in jargon which says the word Ronin, spelt the same way as the character Ronin, R-O-N-I-N. However, this is probably not referring to the character of Ronin, rather the entire mech seems to be inspired by the concept of actual Ronins, so that might be a little bit confusing for Ninjago fans, but yeah, that's probably what's going on. And then on the other side, you just have this dragon marking, with like these little swirls on it, similar to the ones we see on Lloyd's torso, we'll see that when we take a look at the minifigures. And then the other side of the armor is pretty much the same on both sides, there's just like this repeated three-point design. The armor also has these chains hanging down, which adds some nice life to the build, and these are also actually meant to connect to Aaron's mech when he's in the vehicle. I forgot to do that earlier in the video, but we will reconnect it later. Then on the center of the big armor pieces, you have the Master of the Mountain armor piece in dark green, and you can see this has a sticker on it again with that like swirly dragon symbol, which is associated with Lloyd for this wave. And then there's also the sea bound gold blade piece, which can be rotated at the end right here. But now moving the armor piece out of the way, here's a look at the arms underneath. And yeah, you can see they're very small and thin. There's not a ton to them because again, they are meant to be covered up. So I don't mind that too much. They connect onto the body the same way the legs do. So you've got a good range of motion there, though obviously you are a bit limited by the armor pieces on top of it. But yeah, fairly standard design for the upper arm, just lots of dark green texturing pieces all over it. And then there is a small elbow on the mech, which we rotated back and forth, as well as spawn a full 360 degrees. Then this lower arm is very similar to the upper legs, where it just feels a little bit unfinished. I don't know why there's nothing like covering up these studs right here, especially the light gray, because light gray is used a few places on this build, but it's really not one of the main colors of this set. And the fact that the green just cuts off so abruptly, I don't know, feels a little bit unfinished. Again, a super easy fix. I feel like just adding a dark green 1x2 plate would add so much here. But yeah, in the base set, that's just not there at all. And then finally, we have the hand at the very end, and I actually think the hand designs here are pretty cool. The mech has five total fingers, which is something we don't see all too often, or I guess four fingers and a thumb. But the hands are rather flat and chunky, and you can see there's a full 360 degree spin to them. They are connected on with a mini ball joint, but the side-to-side -side movement's restricted, so that ball joint really only allows the hand to spin. But yeah, you can see there's another sticker piece of the massive mountain armor right here, and then each of the fingers is individually posable, as well as the thumb on the side. And the hand being so big, but the fingers being so small definitely creates a super interesting look, and honestly, I kind of love it. Like, having the hand in a fist like this looks really neat. And then if I open the fingers back up, you can see there's a technical in there, and that's, of course, where you can have the mech hold an accessory. And then everything on the other side of the mech is exactly the same, except, of course, there's a sword in the mech's hand. It's actually taller than the mech itself by a lot if you extend out the bottom. 
But you can see it's got one of the giant gold blade pieces that are introduced to crystallize at the top of the sword. And then at the very bottom, we have an all-new recolor for this set, which honestly looks really cool. That's the Seabound Blade piece, but now in red. This wave, I believe, was the first time we've seen this part recolored. It's in red in this set, and then it's in bright orange in the Destiny's Bounty. But yeah, it's cool to see that finally mix that up, because I'm so used to seeing it in gold. It's really neat to get it in other colors. But you can see that sort of functions as a bit of a tassel, because it sort of just hangs down here loosely. And it's a small thing, but I do think it adds a lot to the sword. I like that it's here. And then, of course, the handle of the sword's pretty standard. There's a Tactic Pin in the center, and that's, of course, how you connect it back into the hand when you're ready. And then finally, here's a look at the back of the mech. You can see there's nowhere to store the sword of the mech's back like we sometimes see, but I suppose that's fine. However, there are still a few clips back here, and I assume those are to store Lloyd's swords while he's in the mech, which is always nice to see. They're actually doing that a lot this wave, and it makes me quite happy because, yeah, it looks good, and it's also just helpful. Now taking a look at Aaron's mech, this one's obviously a lot smaller and simpler, but I honestly kind of prefer it if the two in this set. It's essentially just an Evo mech, and if you're familiar with this channel, you'll know I love these small mechs, and this one's no exception. It sticks with the same small mech style that we're used to, but also does a few pretty cool new things. Things. Feet are incredibly simple, but they look good. They work for what they want to be. They, of course, connect on with the mini ball joint, and there's a huge range of motion forward and back, as well as a good bit side to side, not nearly as much, but still pretty solid. Then we have the next night shield piece in green to add texture, as well as a rounded piece on the underside to help lock the foot in place, but it also just adds some extra color to the mech. But then the tops of the legs, they use the next night slash Marvel cockpit pieces flipped upside down to be like knee pads, and that actually works really well. You can see you could flip these up and see the leg underneath, and it just uses like these astromech joint heads on both sides to give it all like a bulkier, rounded look. But yeah, those cockpit pieces fit perfectly around them, and just gives the mech a really unique shape for an armor piece. The green pieces of texture are great too. I love the color scheme of this mech with the bright orange and the dark green, because of course dark green is Lloyd's color, and not only is this mech meant to go with Lloyd's mech, but also it's clear in the show that Aaron is very inspired by Lloyd, so I think it's neat that his color is obviously the most prominent, but for a secondary color he chose to use Lloyd's color, and the two colors just also go together great. Bright orange and dark green is a fantastic color combination. The legs of course connect onto the body on mini ball joints, so it's got the huge range of motion that you'd expect. And then the cockpit piece here is really interesting. Thing. Instead of using just like the standard Evo mech cockpit piece, Aaron has like this Earth Dragon jaw piece, and it's got like this printed mechanical dragon face on it. That looks really cool, much different from the other Evo mechs, but still feels like it fits in, and it just gives the mech overall such a unique shape. You can see there's a bit more of a brick built cockpit beneath that, but yeah, I'd love to see like a mock of a mech dragon using this headpiece. I wonder if that could potentially make for a fun mock video in the future. Then on the top of the dragon's head, you have this printed piece right here that says the word Ninja and Ninjarian, and that's the same one that we saw in the torsos of the Evo Max. So it's cool to see they carry that over, even if the cockpit is different. But yeah, this entire cockpit area can be hinged down, and there you can see is the area for Aaron to stand. Two studs to put his feet on, of course, and then the back's a little more open than the standard Evo Max, and that's of course to fit Aaron's armor piece. So I could just place him in the mech like this, close it back up around him, and there you go, there's how he looks actually in the mech. These black pieces on the top add a nice bit of bulk, and then the arms are fairly standard for Evo Max. Now, this is an all-new recolor of the SCCBS armor piece, which is nice to see. I don't believe that's been recolored since the very first Ninjago Core wave, so it's cool to see them finally introduce a new color, and I think it works perfectly for Aaron. And then he's got a tiny little hand at the very end, which is connected on another mini ball joint, and it holds this gold blade as a weapon. That, of course, to be removed, though, and you can just use these as clips to hold whatever. And both arms are exactly identical. Around the back, the mech looks great, except for really this giant brown piece of the Tactic Pin sticking out. However, that's just the piece that's meant to connect this mech to Lloyd's mech, and if you don't like it, you can simply just remove it, because with it removed, the mech looks great them back, and you can simply just reattach it if you want to attach it to Lloyd's mech. In terms of posability, it's about what you'd expect from an Evo mech. Huge range, and pretty easy to balance. I will say this mech's a little more front heavy than the previous Evo mechs because of that giant dragon face, so the poses are a bit more limited, however there's still quite a lot you can do, very dynamic. So yeah, you have a lot of options. The mech does of course use the SCCPS limb pieces, and while I personally really like those parts, I know a lot of people don't like how they can't bend, and instead they're permanently locked in one position. Personally, I do think that's pretty cool, but yeah, if you're not familiar with them, I guess that is something to be aware of. And then when it comes to the Lloyd mech, I'd say the poseability is decent. The knees definitely had a huge dynamic range of motion, and you can get it in like a walking pose like this. And as I mentioned earlier, the torso being able to rotate really does add a lot. But of course, those giant armor pieces do make the arms annoying to pose. Doesn't really restrict poseability a ton, maybe a little bit, but it's a matter of just having to flip them out of the way and then try to reorient them to fit back around the arms. And I will say the shoes on this mech do make it feel a little less stable than some other mechs. Just because if it tilts forward or backwards ever so slightly, the feet only touching the ground in two places makes it very easy to topple over. So yeah, I think I still maintain that this possibility makes the mech great for display, but probably not the best for play. And I think that's almost everything that I have to show you with the build of this set. However, to end things off, now let me reconnect the Aaron mech to the Lloyd mech to show you how they combine once more. So first you thread the feet on Aaron's mech through these loops in the front of Lloyd's mech. There you go, just like that. Then you connect the Technic pin from the back of Aaron's mech into the Technic hole in the front of Lloyd's. And then finally connect the chain pieces on Aaron's mech right here. 
And there you go, there's how the two mechs look connected back together with both Ninja in there. You can see this actually restricts movement a bit more because these chain pieces force these arm pieces to be unable to move too much, so you can't really rotate them out of the way to move the arms. However, I don't know, the combo feature's just fun. It kind of makes the Lloyd mech look like a dad carrying his son around. It's very silly to me, but I like it. But yeah, I think that's about all I have to show for the builds of this set. I'll talk about them more at the end of this video as like whether or not I think this set's worth it and whatnot. But for now, let's take a look at the minifigures in this set, and then I'll give you my overall thoughts. So here are the first two minifigures in the set, the two Ninja in this set. We of course have Lloyd and Aaron, and both of them are in their all new Dragon's Rising suits for this wave, or I guess Aaron's entirely new character. So yeah, this is his one and only suit so far. And I think these are both pretty good minifigures. Lloyd is, I think, the most common minifigure of this wave, so he's not too difficult of a figure to get. He does come in a $20 set. However, that being said, that doesn't make him a bad minifigure by any means. In fact, I quite like this minifigure. With this wave, they decided to use bright green as the main color for his suit instead of regular green, and I think that just pops so much more and looks fantastic, especially with the dark green printing on top of it. Dark green on top of normal green just feels a little bit bland but dark green on top of bright green just pops so much. I really love how this looks. He's got like this lighter green belt too, which I don't think looks as good, but I feel it fits fine with everything else. And then you can see both ninja use these all new armor and hood pieces. Aaron's hood's a little bit different because he's got like these horns coming out the front. Very curious what the context behind that's going to be in the show. But yeah, their all new armor piece allows them to hold swords around their back, very similarly to the ZX armor from 2012. Aaron as a minifigure though looks pretty good. I love the use of bright orange as his main color. And then the regular orange printing on top of it is very subtle, but I think it looks quite good. And the one regular orange arm looks nice too. Adds a nice splash of color to him. The only part about this figure I don't love is the light green belt right there. I assume the idea is it's green to match with Lloyd, because as I mentioned with the Max, the idea is Aaron like looks up to Lloyd, Lloyd's his teacher, so he wants to have some of Lloyd's color in his suit, and I do like that idea. However, I wish it was like a dark green instead, similar to like what his mech does, because the light green, I don't know, I feel like it kind of clashes with the bright orange. Still though, that's not a huge deal, he is a very cool new minifigure. Removing the armor pieces, there's a full look of the torso prints as well as some of their face prints. You can see Lloyd's got like a little green undershirt on, well with Aaron's armor piece off it reveals that he's actually just wearing a hoodie. It does look like a ninja suit when he's got the armor on, but yeah, without you can see there's just an undershirt right there, and those pockets at the front become a little more obvious. Removing the hood pieces completely now though, there's a full look of both their face prints. You can see Lloyd's got like this sort of digital eye design with these swirls around it, while Aaron just has a slight smirk and I like the printed hair on the sides. Pairing these two around, Lloyd does have an alternate face which is an all new angry face for this wave and I think it looks great, and there's that dragon symbol in the back that all the original ninja have this wave, with those swirls around it similar to the design of the dragon on the mech. And then Aaron unfortunately does not have an alternate face that's definitely a little disappointing to see, but you can see that that like dragon design continues around the back, and then he's got his name written there in ninja jargon. So yeah, I think these two figures are both great inclusions in this set. Maybe it would have been nice to get a third ninja because the set is fairly expensive, but all things considered, I suppose it's fine. Then the next figure in the set is Rapton, who is one of the all new main villains for this wave, and he does have a pretty cool design. He uses like the correct hairpiece in white, and then he's got this all new sword accessory. These come in pretty much every set this wave, but they're the new weapons for the Imperium, and they're like these laser swords similar to like lightsabers, with a trans orange blade and a gunmetal gray hill. He uses this all new armor piece of black too, which looks really good. He has like these little spikes coming off the sides, and I like the sort of triangular way it cuts into the torso. And then around the back of that armor piece, you can see there's just a stud if you want to attach accessories there. And then taking the armor piece off, there's this full torso print. You can see he's got lots of this like gold plated armor, which looks fantastic. And I love all the orange energy running throughout it. There's like a little core in the center, and it almost looks like two little eyes on the side, though I'm not sure if that's intentional. And then turn this guy around to the back. There you can see the back torso print as well, with more of that gold plated armor and orange energy running through. Super high level of detail here. I absolutely love this torso design. And and then his face print I guess I haven't mentioned yet, but yeah, he's got like this single gold plated visor, looks like he has a scar over one eye though we can't see his actual face, and this is a dual sided head so on his alternate face, you can see he's very angry, he's got his mouth open, and he's got like golden teeth on the bottom which is super cool. Yeah I believe this is one of three sets this guy comes in but it seems like he's going to be a fairly important part of the show, so it's definitely nice to get him here. And then the final two minifigures of the set are an Imperium Guard Commander and an Imperium Claw General, and these are two of just the generic villains for this wave, and you can see they actually both have the same torso, leg, and armor pieces wrapped on, so I'm not going to be taking those armor pieces off because you already saw what they looked like with Rapton. But yeah, I think these two are both fairly solid. They've got like these two different variants of these helmet pieces, and the guards have like these large discs, while Claw Commander has like the samurai helmet with horns coming off of it. The samurai helmet looks quite cool, and like the disc shaped helmet's a little bit goofy, but definitely very interesting. And it's got a stud at the front too, which is always fun to see. You can add attachments there if you want. In terms of accessories, the guard comes with like this large brick built staff. It uses like the mech fingers from earlier this year at the top, while the Claw General uses another one of the laser blades that Rapton came with. And then removing their helmet pieces so you can see their face prints up a little bit closer 
closer. I really love the guard's face when it's just like this metal faceplate with this giant glowing eye in the center that looks awesome. And that's of course printed on top of a black head, while the Imperium Claw General has a golden head instead, and this guy has four smaller eyes. But when we turn the two of them around, you can see their back head prints are exactly the same, though of course printed on different colored head pieces. Yeah, neither of these figures are exclusive, nor is this the cheapest way to get them, but they're both fairly solid. The generic villains this way are very high quality, and I think of all the different generic villains, the Imperium Claw General is probably my favorite looking one. I feel like the gold head and the black helmet just go together so well. So yeah, overall, two great inclusions. Happy to see them both here. And so, overall, what are my thoughts on this set? I don't know about this one. I have mixed feelings. It's certainly one of the most unique mechs I've ever seen, which I really like, and this color scheme is so different too, especially for a Lloyd mech. I really like the torso design that's very creative and something so new, and like the giant stickered armor piece on the shoulders is a really creative idea. However, I don't love how it restricts the posability of the mech. There's also a few weird bits on the mech that feel a little bit unfinished, such as on like the forearms and the tops of the legs, and while those are definitely very easy to fix with your own parts, I don't know, I find it a bit odd that the set doesn't come out of the box like that. However, I will say I do really like the Aaron mech, I think it's fantastic, and the idea of two mechs connecting is pretty cool too. I feel like the minifigure selection of this set is also a little bit lackluster, every single minifigure here is available in much cheaper sets, and only five minifigures for $80, I don't know. So if you really love collecting like big Ninjago mechs, this was still a very fun one to build and it's definitely gonna look cool on the shelf, but if you're just like a general Ninjago fan and don't have any special affinity to mechs, this might be one of the sets that's a bit easier to skip out on, just because the price is on the higher end, the minifigure selection is not the best, and while the set looks great in display, I feel like it's a bit more limited for play. But of course, those are just my thoughts, let me know what you guys think of this set in the comments below. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you're new, and let me know in the comments which Ninjago Dragons Rising set do you want to see an earlier review on next. But as for this video, I think that's about all I have to say, so thanks for watching everybody, I hope you all enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!